Hey everyone, welcome to the <laughs> session on SARS Working Group. I'm West Center Line from Whitewater. Uh, so I just uh, wanted to share that I've been really uh, excited about the progress this group has made over the last year. I think it's been um, really productive and and I think ultimately the, the time we put in now is going to help save time for pretty much anyone working on STARS. Uh, so we have um, a, a, a few of us that have been collaborating that have done STARS in the past. Uh, I'm going to kick it to some of my um, co-conspirators of the STARS working group uh, through the course of this presentation to share a little bit about some of the credits and then um, I know Alex and Jake are going to talk a little bit more about you know some of the kind of next steps and some analysis of what we've been able to come up with. Um, but at least from my starting points, I mean, I'm going to have a good time juggling tabs here. Um, we really want to just give you the basic lay of the land of, um, you know, what we have going on here. Uh, so, you know, we took the approach of informally building off of our reports. We've kind of joked around that earlier today of, um, you know, using each other's submissions and then basically taking that and refining it and adding a few things to it or maybe customizing it a little bit. But generally we find there's a number of different stars credits that ultimately, you know, apply the UW system policy, state of Wisconsin policy. There's really kind of like a general consistency of that reality applying to all of us. And um, why rewrite the same thing over and over again when we can just write it once and then copy and paste and everyone can share it. Um, and that's going to make it a lot easier, especially uh, for those of us that are going to rely on students a lot more to do some of the STARS data reporting. Um, I know Stephen's points about to embark on this adventure uh, to update their STARS report with students at the lead. And without having that kind of embedded institutional knowledge, uh, Oshkosh is also in the fold. Um, you know, we think it's going to be a helpful tool to clear some of the more uh, policy wonk type credits. Um, and, and basically get some easy wins for all of us. Um, so let me make sure I'm hitting all my bullet points here. Um, yeah, I got all that. So uh, there's a, obviously a responsibility to maintain all this. So part of the goal too is as each uh, institution starts to use the resources that we've started to build, uh, we want you to review the work that we've done. Um, for example, I noticed right away uh, the documentation that we had recorded for some of the, you know, basically the uh, DOA sustainability uh, guidelines for how to build new construction. Uh, when we first started this project, those were last updated in 2012, and a new version was just dropped in uh, 2020 here in September. Uh, so that document is updated and needs to be gone through, and some of these uh, shared responses are going to get out of date as those types of things happen. So we do ask that if you're gonna use the resource, you also um, review it and, and consider any kind of possible updates, check some of the links and help us keep it up to date. Um, but we want the STARS working group to kind of consistently take on that process as well. And then hopefully over time, if we get everyone kind of helping us maintain the database, we can start to expand our reach and, and our focus into some other kind of specific areas of how to make improvements of these credits that all of us can take advantage of. Um, all right, so I can, oh, uh, so ASHE has done a lot more work at uh, giving us feedback than they used to. Uh, for those of us who did an early STARS report, ASHE was a little bit more hands-off, uh, but they're going through a little bit more of a rig rigorous review process. Um, you know, so it's going to be helpful for us to share where we find ourselves getting tripped up in some of the review processes, and that's another kind of next step as we start to work through this. Um, so again, the, the group, the core group of who's been working on this is basically a bunch of stars nerds. Uh, all of us are stars nerds, except for maybe John Arndt. He's um, coming into this wanting to basically be our guinea pig. Um, so he's going to be using some of our shared responses and, and use it from kind of that outsider's perspective. But, you know, I know John and Alex are huge nerds with stars. Um, there's definitely some stars nerds in the group. Uh, so. It's fun just to kind of participate in that way. Uh, but if you are going to be adventuring in the stars at any point, feel free to join our working group and we can uh, kind of help you navigate this. Uh, so from the navigation perspective, um, I have the screen share up. Um, the stars folder is right in the root folder of our shared drive. 
And the document that I'm going to share first is the shared uh, response language master directory. And I already have that opened up here. So this breaks down all the different stars credits. Um, originally, I had one of my interns kind of populate this with all the credits. And then we've been going through and kind of evaluating what actually um, is or isn't going to be qualified as a shared response. Some stuff is very specific to individual campuses, so it doesn't really fit that shared response spirit. Uh, so Alex has been helpful enough to hide all the extra stuff that we don't need, and we can kind of focus on, on the ones that we think have some version of shared response. And each one of these, if you look at shared response version history, there's a document. Now this document is still kind of an evolving process, I would say. Uh, some of these credits, we don't have like a definitive single shared response. So what we've been doing is copying and pasting the responses from previous stars reports into this document. And our goal is to synthesize one shared response that we could all use. Um, so as you open up each document, you'll be able to see what credit it is and then what field we're responding to and then some best practices being shared throughout. Um, and, and like I said, some are gonna be a little different from others. There's a little bit more detail in some of them. Um, so we also have a little bit of information about the, the source document, the check links, um, and these links can be updated by anyone going through the process as well. Um, so again, this is definitely still a work in progress, but you know, we really wanted to focus on trying to build out at least some of these shared responses to a point where we felt like everyone here could get a sense of what we're trying to accomplish. So to that end, we all decided to pick our favorite credit. It's like picking your favorite child. We all have our favorite credit that we chose. Some of us like the same credits, so we had to choose other credits uh, to get a nice diversity. So I'm gonna go through and let each one of us in the working group kind of briefly introduce themselves and then talk about what you love about your chosen credit. And I'll do the screen share, so all you have to do is just Time in and Professor Love for each one of your credits. Okay, so Alex, tell us all about your love for EM3, student life. Well, oh, professing love in front of a large group. Um, so <laughs> I, I chose this one to, to chat about. So EM3 in the engagement section of STARS um, around student life, the specific question around um, conferences, speaker series, symposia, or similar events that you do related to sustainability that have students um, as part of the intended audience. Um, I chose this one, one, because I think what we're doing right now counts um, towards this for all of us, <laughs> um, insofar as we have directed this towards students and we have students involved um, um, in our efforts. So that was partially why I wanted to highlight this. But stepping back from that, I think what I, what I liked about, about this credit is I, I came into this effort in the STARS Working Group thinking we'd focus really entirely on just like, where are we all gonna have the same response? Let's just get that down, um, the things that we can do together and just save ourselves like having to reinvent the wheel every time. And so there's part of that with this credit because we can put together just a quick couple sentences that describes what this conference is and where you can go on our system website to learn more about these conferences. That's something we could all just copy and paste and add any other detail we'd like pretty quickly to just you know fill out this form. But I guess the other thing then that I didn't realize throughout this process is that as long as we're cataloging some best practices from other schools, it's also a good way for us to look and think, oh, maybe we should think and steal some of these ideas of stuff to do, not just stuff to report. So this, this is an example of something where we can copy and paste an example that I think we all take part of, um, but then also do a quick skim um, as we're thinking about how can we do better next time and look to other schools for some best practices. I love it. Um, all right. I'm sorry. I don't, I lost my notes. Who's, we got OP 11. That might've been Jake. Yep. That is me. Um, I picked this one partly because I beat everyone else to it. Cause this is everyone's favorite credit usually. Um, obviously it's something we've been talking a lot about as a group this entire morning. Um, and I chose this credit, uh, because I think it's a really great example of the way we function as a system and how that influences the sort of policies that we are adhering to. Uh, so, for example, when it comes to something like procurement, we all adhere to the Department of Administration State Procurement Manual, and along with that, we participate with the UW system procurement policies. Uh, it's also worth noting that within the DOA Procurement Manual, um, there is a section that contains the sustainable procurement policy, 
And that was updated finally this last fall to include a little more stringent guidelines around things like um, minimizing waste generation and solid minimizing um, or increasing recyclability. Um, a couple other interesting policies in this credit that I like to point out. We do have policies that encourage state entities to conduct business with minority owned, veteran owned and small businesses. So we're doing a lot of great work on the procurement front, but obviously like we've been talking about this morning, there's a lot, of, uh, there's a lot more work to be done. Um, so happy to continue that conversation. And I think this is a great starting block for us. Awesome, thank you. Um, oh, I'm next, OP19. Um, so uh, this one I, I liked because I felt like it was probably one of the closer credits at this point to having like a true unified shared response, but still has areas that um, individual campuses need to respond to. Um, so, you know, we're kind of clearing the majority of the work here by giving you the background and some of the source documents from DFDM as to what our requirements are around reporting on this. And of course, um, folks from WasteCap are happy to assist you gather this data. So um, it's always important to recognize WasteCap's role in at least the large project and hopefully someday some of the small project stuff too. Um, so this is a, a great kind of spot of, you know, getting some links to some specific documents and really kind of unpacking some of the really, you know, tailored language for this credit, but then also, you know, taking a step in, in contacting WasteCap and figuring out what projects apply under those, those requirements. So, um, okay, I keep losing my notes here. John Gardner. Yeah, so I chose um, clean and renewable energy um, as an example of a credit that um, has some really, really arcane um, language for the state in terms of information and why our little stars committee, um, one of the big benefits of working through what we've set up would be for your campus. Um, and so specifically it's because um, renewable energy uh, contracts that were signed in 2008 um, all go through DOA and um, then they get allocated um, renewable energy credits or attributes get allocated out to each uh, institution in the state um, through a not terribly straightforward process sometimes and so in this shared language we were able to present all that um, hopefully in some intelligible manner and then give you the documentation where you can actually link and look up for each fiscal year how much renewable energy attribute um, how many renew renewable energy attributes did we as an institution receive from DOA. Um, also all the contracts are included. Um, so if you're looking uh, for any, even if you're looking for lead um, information on renewable energy purchased by the state, you can point to those contracts um, to go after uh, those energy credits. Um, so it's just one of those weird things where, you know, hopefully the shared work that we do can help everyone, um, especially around really, really arcane um, policy issues that can be hard to find sometimes. And I know how much John loves a good arcane policy. So we always appreciate having his input and guidance on unpacking some of these uh, issues. And nothing, nothing says unpacking it more easily than copy and pasting, right? Um, all right, and then last but not least, John Arndt is going to talk to us a little bit about, I think it's PA14. Yep, there we go. Yep, exactly. Thanks a lot, Wes. Um, one of the beauties, of, of course, being part of a system there, we should be able to gain some efficiencies when it comes to administrative functions. And one of those uh, with PA14 or it's PA13 if you finish STARS 2.1, uh, there are points available for having a campus wellness program. And we all participate as part of UW system in a shared uh, employee assistance program and wellness program. So automatically we're all gonna get that first half point if we link back to uh, system administration's program uh, that's listed there. And like I said, all, all of our campuses participate in this. 
so we can get some points there. And then the second uh, half point that's available for this is uh, for campus non-smoking policies. Now, uh, if you're going to get full points on this thing, they want your campus to be a fully non-smoking uh, campus with a policy out there. But we actually have language uh, that's, that's part of Chapter 18 that already specifies that certain buildings or particular buildings with on e within each campus are automatically smoke-free. So there is a there is the ability, even if you're not declared as a fully smoke-free campus, to share in some partial points by linking back to chapter policy. So um, this is, I think, one of the advantages of, of the program that we're setting up is where there are shared uh, points in the in the program, we can all take advantage of this and don't have to reinvent the wheel. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. So um, a lot of this is kind of mining nuggets. And, you know, we, uh, those of us who have done stars a couple times have a little bit more familiarity with the credits. But, you know, there's always an opportunity for uh, somebody taking a fresh look at stars to perhaps find something new. Uh, if you really want to read all the UW system policies, you might be able to uncover something that you could at least bring back to that STARS focus. Um, you know, so part of that facilitation is to really make sure that those of us working on STARS are working together and networking. And STARS kind of has a built-in method of this. Uh, they have a peer review method that allows you to choose um, other institutions to take a look at your report before ACE gets to it, and then uh, essentially give you feedback before you get to that point. Uh, so to kind of share a little bit more about what we're thinking on this, I'm going to bring Alex up to, to do that and I'll do, I'll stop my screen share for you. Alex. All right, Jake, do you want to share the presentation while I, while I chat? Yep, I'm pulling that up and we are a little ahead of time here. So if anybody has any questions on what we just presented, um, feel free to chime in right now. We're a few minutes before time, so we do have a little bit. Is there any way when we're doing the reporting uh, folks to be able to identify which of these credits are gonna be system-based before we go through there? Or is it just pretty much as we go through making those observations? Um, I, uh, sorry, I'll take that. I saw Alex just about to do it. So quick draw, sorry, Alex. Um, the, the easiest way to do that right now, Dave, is to look at the spreadsheet that we have set up, that master directory. Uh, mm -hmm. Because Alex has gone through and hidden all the irrelevant credits, you should be able to go through that master directory and just see the credits that we felt would be applicable at the system level. Now, that's not to say that this is the final version. Um, we may find additional connections that all of us could share or partake in that would bring another one of those credits online. Uh, but honestly, that's almost something that we need feedback from from somebody who's actively doing STARS. Um, you know, so if that connection gets made in your head and you say, hey, I think there's a UW system thing that applies to all of us for this one. And those stars guys, those stars groups that just didn't capture that one. Uh, that's where we really are looking for that outside input. We need, we've done all this in theory, but all of us are not actively reporting right now. So we need active reporters to really go through and, and tell us how to improve the tool. Right on. Well, we're gonna, uh, we're starting our active reporting next week, Tuesday. So uh, we will, uh... We're happy to guinea piggy on this as we move forward. Love it. Ditto. There you go, Abigail. You got instructions. Awesome. I will point out that. Oh, sorry. Um, just to piggyback Wes on what you said, um, that spreadsheet has left it, you know, just to those credits where we thought there is some um, system, you know, applicability overlap. But as you know, in STARS, each credit might have five to 20 questions. So it's not necessarily that all of those pieces are. There's at least there's one piece in there. So it's not an answer to everything, but it's a little, it's a something at least for each one of those credits. All right, um, if there are no further questions, can I get a thumbs up if my presentation is on my PowerPoint or is it on the presentation mode? I have multiple PowerPoint. Okay, yep. great. All right. 
I think the next thing we were going to chat about was our thoughts around the peer review process. And um, I know um, Wes um, set this up, but I'm going to do a, a, a slightly different setup and just say that whenever you're completing um, your STARS report, you have to submit it to, to AISHI, the, the certifying body, and they will review it before they ultimately you know, bless it and give you the thumbs up. And we've talked about how they've been pretty good at providing feedback, and that's something we want to capture and make sure we're appropriately taking into account um, in our shared response. Um, but they also acknowledge that they do not look at every single credit. They do a sampling of your report and they look at it um, and you have to resolve their issues and then they're good to go. Um, so um, what uh, STARS, what AISHI does is they incentivize people who um, complete their report to have some sort of external review or additional review before it's submitted. So they have an extra layer of certainty that the data submitted is accurate. So there are actually two places now in the newest version of STARS um, where your report can get extra points just by simply certifying and documenting that you went through that review process. There's a whole actually new credit. Um, I think it's PA4 is the new one where you can get one point if you do some sort of review that could be internal or external. And then an extra whole half point um, kind of exemplary practice um, if you do it all external. So, um, in addition to the points, um, I think we all acknowledge that there's so much in all of these reports and it's so easy to get lost in the weeds that it's extremely helpful to have someone who isn't down in the weeds take a look, particularly at those um, key credits to make sure that you're not um, saying anything accurately, inaccurately, or, or missing anything. So Jake, if you wanna to go to the, the peer review slide. With all that said, we all know, also know that there are 60 some odd credits um, in a STARS report and agreeing, um, you know, if Wes sends you an email and says, hey, can you review our report, you know, saying yes commits you to a good chunk of work. Um, and so we had a few guiding principles to help us think through how we wanted to set up this peer review process. And one of those very important guiding principles is we are all busy. Um, so it is not something that um, is very easy for us to semi-regularly being agreeing to take on or view someone's entire um, full report. So we thought that there was a benefit in dividing that kind of peer review process workload um, across um, schools and staff um, to lessen the workload on any one individual, um, but also give um, uh, individuals an opportunity if they're interested to kind of develop specialties in a couple credits. So if there's a couple areas that you're particularly passionate about, um, if you are um, the new Wes on procurement who always writes up the, the perfect version of it and you wanna be kind of the person who knows that the best, um, taking on the role of being on the go-to um, person for um, reviewing that particular credit, um, you could develop some specialties in that way. So that's my soft pitch for why you should be involved um, in the peer review process. Um, basically what our proposal is, is that we identified um, as our team uh, a subset of all the STARS credits that we thought would um, have the most benefit of having some sort of external review. Um, whether those are credits that um, have a lot of system overlap, so there's a lot of potential um, for shared response and, and a lot of opportunity for us to make sure that we're being consistent across system in our reports, or they're particularly complicated credits, or they are credits that are kind of like high point um, areas, parts of, of the report that AISHI usually also um, ha digs into um, pretty, pretty in depth. So we identified those and we thought that what we could do is divide up those credits amongst, we would, I think ideally to keep workload at a, at a reasonable amount, seven staff would be interested in taking on about two to three credits that are kind of theirs to own for peer review. And so when it's your turn to say, I need my STARS report peer reviewed, you would ping this group of seven and they would all take their two to three credits from your report and review it. Um, STARS has a reviewer template. So we would just ask that the reviewer just completes that template it's a pretty simple basically spreadsheet. You just say like, um, I looked at it, it looked like the responses conformed with what the STARS looks or it didn't conform and then why, and then just a documentation from the person um, who developed the report, how they addressed um, those um, comments. We think this would also be another great check to make sure that we are updating the shared response language as well. So the peer reviewer not only would review um, the institution's report, but also note if there's any um, changes or updates, uh, make sure that's carried over, or has been carried over to the shared response. Um, then um, in order to get those 
full points from STARS, the, the, um, the submitting institution then could do an internal review of the remaining credits. Um, so they could qualify for that full point and that would be then less work on their internal staff um, as well. I realize I've been talking a lot at a computer screen. Um, any um, questions or comments um, on this proposal, on this, this thought, how we could all support each other? So uh, one question I have, Alex, is when you're talking about being on here and you're having your two or three questions for um, this, that, or the other thing, is there guidance from ACI that there's only a specific set of questions that they're looking to have peer reviewed or sort of how does that work? Because it seems like if you have seven people with three questions each, that's 20 some credits. And I'm pretty sure the STARS report has got more than that. So I'm sort of curious, like, what's that? Uh, what's yeah. that back and forth or how does that work? Sure. So um, from ACI in terms of getting points in STARS, you need to provide documentation that every single credit was reviewed um, by someone who was not directly involved in you know, filling it out. Um, that could be internal or external. Um, so our thought for this is that we would set up a pool of external reviewers for you that would address the biggest thorniest credits and then at each school then hopefully would be able to identify an internal staff to do hopefully the easier credits to be able to qualify for that point. So yes, this is not every single credit. Um, so it wouldn't get you that full point unless you supplemented it with um, some internal staff review. So if it wasn't clear, the other thing that we'd be asking is if there's anyone interested in becoming a subject matter, matter expert in one or two STARS credits, and would love to be involved and, and own and being kind of the peer review um, lead um, for a particular area. Um, well, hold on, you all don't need to stand up right now. Um, you, you can think about it if you'd like, feel free to reach out directly to myself, um, alex.frank at wisc.edu. Um, we'll make sure to follow up with an email on that as well. Any other questions on peer review? Thank you, Ashley, for throwing that in the chat. All right, Jake, show us some numbers. All right, if there are no other questions, let's talk about what we learned over the, this last uh, 18 months of all the nerds meeting up together and talk about stars. Um, so here's a snapshot of how we did as a system broken down by the four different STARS categories in addition to the one innovation area of STARS as well. So for those that aren't as familiar with STARS, there's academics, engagement, operations, and planning and administration. And there's a number of credits in each of those categories that we all score on. Um, as you can see, a good chunk of our schools have done STARS, have an up-to-date STARS report. A lot of schools have done multiple reports. Um, so these are the most recent reports, except Platteville did just do the first STARS 2.2, which is a little different than 2.1, which is what the rest of us are up-to-date on. But we, we kept the 2.1 numbers in there because um, they've updated quite a bit between 2.1 and 2.2. It's kind of like comparing apples to oranges right now. So to keep consistent, we just wanted to use the 2.1 scores. Um, so we did fairly well. Um, everyone is at least a silver, if not a gold, nobody is a bronze or a porter. It's worth noting that no one is yet a platinum. So the race is on to figure out who will get there first. Um, hopefully the work of this group can contribute to that. So broken down a little bit more, where did we do well as a system? So we went through and basically plugged all of our numbers into different calculators and try to figure out how we came out as a system. How did we average on scores? So it's worth noting that we did receive full points on three credits as an entire system. That's our outreach campaign, our sustainability coordination, because we're all so lovely at our jobs, and the wellness program, of course, that John was talking about. Um, it's also worth noting, I think, that half of our top 10 credits are student and campus community focused. And we often think about sustainability as purely an operations 
mechanism, but there really is that people component and we are doing very well as a system doing that. Um, so these credits are where we scored above 75% on average as a system. And this is out of 62 or four, I forget exactly, 62 or four credits altogether. Um, so I wanted to open up and see if anybody wanted any clarification on what these credits mean. Does anything stand out to anybody? Are you surprised by anything? We just wanted to open the floor a little bit and talk through these credits. And we'll of course talk about what we're not doing so well in a little bit. I mean, some of what I see here, I'm, I, first of all, this is great work, folks. So that's awesome. Um, thinking about this, some of this where we're doing well, I think makes sense just based on sort of what guidance we've gotten from the state in terms of what the expectations are. So I'm not necessarily surprised to see, for example, um, like hazardous waste being right up there as a responsibility to be managed effectively. I'm, I'm, I will be interested in what we're not doing. Yeah, this looks great. Um, thanks for doing this. The, the one thing I'm wondering is um, <clears throat> for the points where we do well, um, how many of these are points where like the reporting ask is pretty small? You know, because I know like going through stars, right? Some points you have to enter in so much information and answer so many questions and provide so much data. Um, and others are pretty easy lift. Do we feel like these are easy lift ones? And not that that, you know, makes them less important, but I'm just curious if um, some of these stick out to me as ones that were, were um, you know, relatively easy to report on from what I recall. I think there's a mix. Um, some of them like outreach campaign. Yeah, you know, that's just sort of listing what outreach campaigns you've done. It's pretty straightforward. Um, same with the coordination. Um, and then some of them are pretty in depth, like campus is a living lab, you know, that's pretty explanatory, but um, there's a fair bit that you probably want to explain the electronics purchasing. I would, you know, that, that can take a, a bit of time to wrangle that data from campus um, IT sources um, and the research and scholarship. Um, that, that's a big lift. Um, it's a lot of points. Um, but that's something that I know AC is focusing on going forward too, is trying to get better definition around that um, credit. And there's a lot of information that could go in that one. Awesome. Thanks, John. Any other questions out there? I wrote down like five questions that I have from this system slide, but I don't know if I should wait until the end. I was just like writing them down for later. No, we, we've, we're doing fine on time. So if you want to ask a couple, we're okay. more than happy. Um, I, so I haven't seen the system scoring. Um, and I think this is really interesting. And I was just curious, like, as a system, how do we compare with other systems? Or have we not gotten there yet? I don't think we've talked about it numbers wise. I think, you know, at the, at the meta scale, we've talked about it. Um, I mean, obviously, the California system is something we envy quite a bit. Um, quite a few. Out there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's not fair. Um, so we, we definitely aspire to, uh, you know, get to that level of collaboration between system schools. Um, but again, I think it comes down to that coordination at a system level. But to answer your question, no, we have not really compared uh, to other systems a whole lot. Yeah, and maybe that's, um, I'd have to look into like that, that credit more, but maybe that's, like a, a key benefit that Kate could use in some of her requests to get a position is if we're using the STARS credit as like our universal language, maybe there's something in there that we can use to justify that position. Um, 
And then another question I had was just thinking about how more campuses are using STARS as their framework. I'm, I always try to think of like how to include the campuses that are either don't have a sustainability office, don't have a sustainability coordinator, or maybe like some of the two-year campuses, like if there's ways that we can utilize or leverage stars to engage them. Like, I don't know who could do like the lift and getting all the data, but that might help justify um, new programs or um, staffing on, on those campuses too. Just a thought. I don't have a, uh, an answer per se, um, but at least through STARS, um, you can submit a report that wouldn't necessarily get evaluated. You would it'll still just be called a reporter. You wouldn't be able to get the like bronze, silver, gold, whatever. Um, but I think you can do that without having to pay the STARS membership. John, tell me if I'm wrong on this. Um, but, um, and you can do that on just, you could submit that for just a few credits. So especially if we are asking, like if we think there are things that would be really important to document across system, we wouldn't necessarily need to ask every single school who doesn't have the staff to do a full STARS report. Maybe it's, we think that the these are four or five really important areas and we want to support them in, in answering those four or five things without necessarily having to take on the full STARS effort. Can I quickly ask how are folks handling, or I guess maybe mostly for point, how are you handling bringing your two-year campuses into reporting this year? Fantastic question. Um, I don't think anybody's done it yet, um, at least in an official um, yeah. STARS report, but we're all, um, either planning to or mulling over how to do it. <laughs> um, because yeah, we agree. It'd be, it'd be really great, Ashley, to your point, um, to, because we have some sort of, because we're, the two years are now part of um, some of the comprehensive and four years, um, to really figure out ways to capture their information, broaden our boundary um, and get some of the programs um, that we do out to those schools and maybe, you know, sort of like customer discovery, figuring out um, the conversations that we can have with those schools, um, some of which I'm sure are happening already, um, but around, okay, well, we, we do this on the main, on the main campus, um, you know, how could this work or what could you do better um, at the two years? And I think as we've started to evaluate this, one of the interesting quandaries that I already know is going to come up is the um, on the operations end, uh, programs and operations are run really differently and uh, with different expectations and with different resources. So, um, you know, like thinking about the fact that we've got a pretty uh, massive uh, composting program running throughout our campus, but then on our branch campuses, there's none of that. And so then how do we navigate the space when we're responding um, to these? So that way it's uh, a clear, um, we're being truthful with what we're responding with. Um, so it, those parts of it are gonna be interesting to navigate uh, in this process. So. Um, We'll be providing that feedback to you all as we go, I'm sure. Yeah, Ashley, a good example of that for us would be uh, commuting emissions. Like we have a transportation survey that we put out every three years, but it's just for the main campus, <laughs> um, except for this year, which it's it's out to the, the other campuses too. Um, but by necessity, if we didn't have that data, we wouldn't be able to really respond um, on the travel side of things with a fully accurate picture surrounding a boundary of the two-year schools. And so we'd have to think pretty hard about how we could do that or not do that. And I can't see the chat, so I'm not sure if other questions were popping in. Um, happy to address those in a little bit, but I just wanna make sure we see a couple other slides. Um, so, of course, we then want to talk about what are areas we can improve. 
Um, so a similar metric, our top 25 credits or top 25% of credits, and these are our bottom 25% of credits. So where did we not do so well? Uh, unsurprisingly, we didn't do all that well when it came to our investment. It's obviously something we've talked a lot about as a system. And I was a little surprised to see how poorly we did as a system when it came to our campus fleet and food and beverage purchasing, namely because we did score so high on campus dining. You'd think those things would transfer over a little bit more, but evidently not. Um, and then a couple areas that I think we could have more impact on are our engagement areas. You know, that's that's not as dictated by different policies or on the state, different red tape. Um, I think we could have much more of an impact on that at, at our individual offices. Um, but again, we wanted to wanted to share this, we wanted to see if anything jumped out to anybody, any questions, um, anything you wanted clarified. Um, just want to open up the floor. One thing that jumped out to me is I felt I felt like we were really behind on the employee educators program. And I was like, I can't believe we don't have a really good, you know, we're not engaging our employees better on this. So it was actually kind of nice to see that other people are struggling with this as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of shocked to see the community service be so low. Uh, there is, uh, at least at, in point, there's a substantial amount of volunteer focus that's given and with student athletes and student orgs and all of that stuff. So it's surprising to, to see that there, I would have felt like that would have been higher. Great, so then this of course begs the question of, okay, now what do we do? What should we do next? Um, so we did wanna have a discussion around um, what should our group as, you know, the STARS working group, what should we be prioritizing to collaborate on? Alex did mention a little bit about our peer review proposal, but we wanted to hear from the rest of the group as well. That's not as involved in STARS as the rest of us. Well, one quick observation I have would be to look at um, those points where we're underperforming and try and evaluate how the STARS committee might work to help uh, improve that reporting structure or the analysis. So I think like even thinking about the employee education program, um, you know, that could probably be something that I would think, um, you know, could be, we could make a, an attempt to do a general program around that, that covers all of the system and then like could be, a fine tune per campus on certain things that we wanted to do, but that would be a way to to sort of look at that uh, and move that up. So that would be the one area where I'd be interested to see the group move forward is sort of like, okay, in where we're not performing well, that's what needs improvement. Obviously, the divestment issue is its own sort of monster as it relates to that, but there's clearly other things that we could probably be doing to help uh, move some of those uh, score lines uh, further up the scale. Um, so that's probably would be one of my recommendations is looking at seeing how we can uh, take advantage of this group and, and come up with some ways to score that more positively for lots of folks. Yeah, just to add to what Dave said, I think um, Wes handles all of our star stuff. So <laughs> thanks, Wes. Um, I think something though on my end of it is like um, showcasing that or like the communication piece. So like digesting stars and translating it into something that makes sense or is like of value to our audience or the campus community. So maybe even like if you guys are focused on like improving a stars credit, um, kind of like how Dave mentioned, like sharing out with the listserv or the primary contacts or something, um, monthly calls or whatever that might be, but sharing out um, some ways to improve um, or like even like copy and paste some language or if you have to make changes on your campus, like what are the, um, Wes calls it catnip. What's the catnip for administrators? <laughs> like what is that incentive or their carrot token? 
whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, I think the communication piece um, formed around these different credits would be helpful too. Jake, I might just highlight the, the second bullet you have on the slide here, um, which is something that came up in a couple of our discussions. I think, you know, the, the data that um, Jake just went over um, about the credits for doing well and we're doing poorly was basically just us taking all the stars reports that existed and just doing quick averages on the points from stars. Um, but we were discussing, are there things that we actually want to look at a system level, right? If we're all collecting data for stars anyway, are there pieces of that that would be more interesting or beneficial for us to highlight for a communications opportunity or for pushing for operational um, changes, policy changes um, that we want to not just report how we do on our star score, but we want to report how we do on the actual like impact metrics um, below it at a system level. I think we, energy is the place where we're semi doing that already. Um, we actually have a, a group kind of focused on that. Um, but if there are other things that jump out to you um, that might be of interest for us to, to think about. Uh, one of the things I think about, um, and I feel like I've got a lot of comments in this process, so excuse me if I'm hogging the conversation at all, but like going back to thinking about the procurement um, that I think uh, Wes opened up in some of the policy stuff, where we have opportunity to work with minority owned businesses, uh, businesses owned by vets, and then yet thinking about the fact of how many of us have to purchase stuff through BSI um, as a place for procurement. And, you know, that's essentially using prison labor to do that, which is problematic on a lot of regards, right? And especially becoming more and more apparent about where the issues with that are. So I think that might be just something else to think about in terms of like, how can we exploit the data that we're coming across or the information we're coming across to make better decisions universally? Um, you know, so it's like, I don't necessarily know how that would play itself out when it came to signage per se. Um, but knowing that that's where we have to, going to BSI is where we're sort of directed to go if there are these other opportunities to make improvements because of uh, how the state has aligned some of these other language. Like, you see that, like, hey, I had no idea. So that's really useful information to know, thinking about, like, well, how can you drive that? forward to improve results would be really really interesting. All right, if nothing else, I will briefly turn it back over to Alex to discuss possible next steps. Yeah, we don't have too much to say other than I think Dave stole our lines that we're looking for guinea pigs. And um, I think Dave and Brad maybe already volunteered um, their schools, their teams to be the guinea pigs, right? So um, we threw the links um, earlier on in the chat to the spreadsheet and the folder. Thank you, John, um, for doing that. Um, and as you're working on stars here over the next, who knows how many ever months, um, cause we know it's a month long process, um, use it. Um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to myself or, or anyone else, um, that you heard talking today, um, and, at, or comments, right? We love, want to make sure this is useful or I don't, um, and that it's, it's beneficial in some sort of way. So that's the first thing. If there's anyone else, um, that is thinking of doing stars soon and, and wants to use it, um, let us know. Um, and if you have comments, let us know. And then lastly, if you want to become a subject matter expert slash peer reviewer in a couple credits um, and join our kind of peer review team, uh, please let me know.